Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder. Thank you for being with me all week as we've spent some meaningful moments with the Master looking at leadership. And I hope you've been blessed and have learned a whole lot and that you realize that you are a leader. You don't have to have an office to be a leader. You don't have to have a title to be a leader because leaders are somebody who influences other people, who make a difference through influence. And if you're influencing other people, then you are a leader. Even if you're influencing them to do the wrong thing, then you're a leader. You're just a bad leader. So there is leadership in all of us. All of us are called to be leaders, and leaders are people who are thinkers. They continue to read. They know the best practices. They seek mentorship from people who are achievers in the area where they want to succeed in. And the leaders are people who are determined. Leaders are determined people. Leaders are somebody who are courageous. Leaders are people who have goals. And then finally, leaders are people who are willing to pay the price for leadership. You're willing to pay the price. The price you pay is the potential you will realize. The price you pay is the potential you realize. You've got to be willing to pay the price if you're going to be a great leader. Jesus, we are told in Matthew chapter 36 and verse 29, this is when Jesus went to pray in a garden. He's in a garden called the Garden of Gethsemane. And he invited three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, to pray with him. And they entered into the garden, and they fell asleep. But the Bible says this about Jesus. He just didn't go to the entrance of the garden. It says, and Jesus, going a little bit further, fell. he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it be if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And that phrase, Jesus went a little bit further. Not only describes Jesus as he went further into the garden, but it describes what kind of leader Jesus was during his life. He, he just didn't do enough to get by. He went a little bit further. In so many areas of his life, when it came to service. There were times when Jesus was tired, but he went a little bit further in service and fed the multitudes. There were times when Jesus' uh, me time was disrupted by people who wanted something from him, like the woman uh, who had a daughter who was vexed with the demon. And Jesus went a bit, little bit further, even though he was tired, in order to heal that troubled child. Jesus went a little bit further when it comes to forgiveness and love because on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's going just a little bit further. And when it comes to great leaders and great people, there are people who are not content with mediocrity. While some people may stop uh, when it's convenient, leaders say, you know what? By the grace of God and by the power of God, I will go a little bit further. We've all heard of Henry Ford, but what most people don't know about Henry Ford was that um, he was a very unassuming man. Sometimes you can even tell it was Henry Ford because he was often dressed down. There's a story, I don't know if it's true or not, but it's just a story about Henry Ford on one occasion was in one of the mechanic garages uh, there in the Detroit area, Pontiac, Detroit area. He was in one of those garages and he had on the clothes of an average work person. You couldn't tell it was Henry Ford. He didn't wear a suit. He just hanging around that garage. And a salesman came in with his car to the garage and says, uh, there's something wrong with my car. And the, the mechanic looked at it and said, you know what? I have to order the parts. I can't fix your car because I need the parts. But if you'll stay the night, I'll have you up and running so you can be back on the road as a salesman. And he said, okay. He said, but where can I stay? And the mechanic said, well, right down the street though. You see that? That's the hotel. And uh, he said, okay. And so he said, well, he looked at Henry Ford and he said to Henry Ford, he said, I tell you what, I'll give you a little money if you'll help me carry some of my bags and to the 
hotel because I can't drive my car down there. And the great Henry Ford, playing along, said, okay. And he grabbed him by, he grabbed his bags, and he started walking down to the hotel with the man's bags. This is Henry Ford. And the man looked at Henry Ford and said, oh, my God, look at that big building over there that is being built. He said, oh, who owns that building? And the man carrying the bag said, who was Henry Ford? I do. And the man looked at him and asked, well, how are you able to own that big building over there? And Henry Ford looked at him and said, well, the reason I'm able to own it because I believe in carrying my own bags. Well, my brothers and sisters, when it comes to success, you've got to be willing to carry your own bags. Jesus went a little further. You know, you cannot climb the ladder of success if your hands are in your pocket. You know, God will put the ladder there, but if your hands are in your pocket, you can't climb the ladder of success. You've got to take not just one hand out to climb, but you've got to take both hands out. God will create the ladder. You take both hands out if you're going to, to climb the ladder of success and be willing to carry your own bags, which is to say big dreams. In fact, there's no big dreams if it has a small price tag. No such thing. Big dreams carry with it a big price time. No big dreams without a price to it. And the price, you must be willing to pay the price and carry your own bags. Now, how do you pay the price? Here's some things you have to do. First of all, if you're going to go a little bit further, you've got to be energetic. you got to be energetic. you, you got to work at it energetic energy bring some energy to whatever big dream that you have don't be lazy don't be lazy bring energy to it energy plus talent you take a person that got talent and energy that person will be a king energy and no talent you'll be a prince but if you got talent and no energy You'll never make anything out of their talent, and you'll be a pauper. And the reason why many people are paupers or not succeeding is not because they don't have talent, because they don't have energy. And sometimes they don't have energy because they're wasting their energy on things that do not matter and are not important. Take your energy and channel your energy to your dreams and the things that God is calling you to do as a leader. You must be energetic. Secondly, you must be enthusiastic. Get excited. Have energy and get excited about what God is getting ready to do in your life. Get excited about your dreams, about the things that can come to pass. Don't hang around the people who are so negative and calls you to have a leak in your enthusiasm. The word enthusiasm, what's in the middle of that word? Enthusi, enthuse, enthuse. That's the Greek word theos, which is God. Enthusiasm means being filled with God. And when you are filled with God, you get excited, you get enthusiastic. Even when you're broke, even when things are not going well, you get excited because you are anticipating what God is getting ready to do in your life. That's leadership. Leaders, my brothers and sisters, are energetic, have energy, because energy plus talent makes you a king. Energy and no talent makes you a prince. Talent without energy, you'll be a pauper. Uh, when you're a leader, you're not only energetic, but you are excited, you're enthusiastic. And then finally, leaders, leaders who carry their own bags are optimistic. They are optimistic. They believe it's going to happen. You're not constantly looking down. Have you, what happens to animals that look down? Let me name some of them. Hogs and cows, they look down. And what happens to them? They get eaten. And when you look down, well, you tend to get eaten. 
So look up. Be energetic. Be enthusiastic. And let me give you just one more. Urgency. Carry your own bags and be urgent. The key to getting ahead is getting started. You're not procrastinating. You're not putting it off until another day, a more convenient day, but you're going to get started. God has called you to leadership. God has called you to tell you to take your life to another level and maximize who you are. And you can only do it when you are carrying your own bags, when you're courageous, when you're determined, when you are thinking, and when you add all these things up, you don't have a title, mm -mm. you don't have an office, mm -mm. you're not even famous, but you're a leader because you're influencing others and you're maximizing your skill set. Perhaps the greatest tragedy in life is to go to your grave with your best music still in you. Do not go to your grave with your best music still in you. It's time to activate what God has put into you. And don't be a lead, because leadership starts with the word lead. A ladership. Ask God to help you develop your leadership by the grace of God. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word this week and what we've learned about leadership. Help us maybe in our small groups to go over these words and to, to discuss them with other people. Help us to write them down because leaders write their goals down and help us to get started, to implement them with a sense of urgency and to act on it. Now, Lord, we can do our part, but we can't do anything without you. And you won't do anything if we're sitting around not doing anything for ourselves. So partner with us, God, so that this can be turnaround November and turnaround December and, and, and launch a new beginning in 2021. Bless your people, we pray. Thank you for your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you for being with me this entire week. when We've been talking about leadership. And don't forget, tomorrow is Sunday, the Lord's Day, the Sunday before voting ends on November the 3rd. So we're just a few days away from making a difference in our nation. I've got a special word that I'm going to preach tomorrow as I close out this series I've been in on the religion of Trumpianity. And I'm going to talk about on Sunday, Sunday's message is entitled, How to Turn the Ballot Box into a Blessing Box. I'm going to talk to you about what democracy is all about. Demos. Demos is the Greek word for people. Democracy. Demos is ruled by the people. Ruled by the people. And we, we practice democracy through voting. And so I've got a word to share with you about that tomorrow and why we must all get out to vote and make a difference in our nation. This may be probably the most important election in our lifetime because this is the most difficult year by far in America's history. So be with us tomorrow. The pre-worship service begins at nine o'clock. Invite someone to hear, say, Pastor Cobb is going to talk about the moving, how to turn the ballot box into a blessing box. So you need to tune in. The service begins at nine o'clock with the pre-worship service. And then the actual worship experience begins at 930. If you don't have a church home, you don't have to wait until tomorrow to unite with St. Stephen Church. If you know this is the place God wants you to be and you're growing and nurturing, there's some things we want you to do as one of our online members. So contact us here at St. Stephen Church at newstart at ssclive.org. New start at ssclive.org. And look, if you want information about where you go to vote, if you're here in the state of Kentucky, in your own state, find this out. You can go to voteky.gov. Go voteky.gov. God bless you. Love you very much. Something's going to happen in a few days. Let's be a part of making something great happen in the United States. As we close out, as we've always done on this last day before a new week begins. 
a new week begins. Let's say together our closing salutation. During COVID-19, stay safe. Wear your mask, wash your hands, social distance. Stay safe, stay sane, trust God, meditate on his word. If you can, stay home. And for the next few days, let's stay ready to vote and let's vote. God bless you. Love you so much. Thanks for being with me this week. See you tomorrow in church.